Alright, so hey folks, I uh, have an update on my Orange Pi Zero. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with the Orange Pi Zero, let me... So this, this mess of wires here is actually a computer. It's kind of cool. It's an Orange Pi uh, Zero. So let me uh, hook the keyboard back up. It's got a single USB port. And uh, I've been working pretty hard on this thing, so it looks like a rat's nest right now. Been messing with it for a couple of days. Now I do have a second camera here, so I am shooting down. So let me give you a quick update on what's actually going on here. First, I'll sign into it. It's a little bit on the pokey side sometimes. Um, one of the things that's kind of neat is it, it ramps down the processor to a, a couple hundred megahertz and then it ramps it up when you actually do something. Um, it isn't helping that I'm using a uh, $1.50 uh, 4 gig SD card from China. I'm sure it is class 0 0.10. Um, now, on a, on a serious note, I, I think my storage is pretty slow. Um, Trying to get my uh, antenna to at least stick up so I can get halfway, eh, whatever. All right, so the Orange Pi Zero has video out, but a lot of people don't know where to find it. So go to my website, www.nanohawk.com, which is where I keep all my electronic stuff. And I have a detailed explanation of the difference between an RCA signal and a VGA signal. I think once you look through the diagrams, you'll understand you're not going to hook this thing straight up to a VGA monitor. Um, you might hook it up to a TV, but I didn't have any luck with that either. So what did work for me was using the ground pin, which if you start from, I'll use a screwdriver to point, if you start from the USB connector, the first pin is 5 volts. Don't use it for anything, it doesn't supply very much power. The second pin is ground, and then you could read the pin diagram, which is also on nanohawk.com, courtesy of um, somebody else. I, I, I found the image on one of the open source sites, and I basically posted it to my blog so I can find it again. But the easy thing to do here is second pin in is ground, fifth pin from the other end is your video out. And so you take those two, put them on alligator clips, and then you can hook it up to this high-tech um, RCA cable. This is the cheap and simple way. Now, there are other ways to do this. And let me see if I can find... Yeah, so you, you could get one of these. In fact, heck, let's do it. So I just showed you the ghetto rigged way to do this, but let's get rid of some wires because, you know, quite frankly, these are all really irritating. So I've already traced that on this one, red is the tip and gray is the ring. And what I mean by that is the tip and the ring. And it's real common that the ground is, is the outer side. So now I'll go ahead and hook this in. Let's see if I got it right. Boom! I've got my image back. So, um, really the only thing you're going to use this for is, is programming it. Um, as far as an operating system, you can go out to armbian.org. Fantastic group of folks out there that are real dedicated. And you can download an image. It takes up about 1.2 gigs of space on the SD card that will run this thing. And I bet you're asking, what is the converter you're using? Yeah, that's right. So I go, I go from my video out into my RCA jack on this converter, and then I go out via VGA. And this is a converter that I ordered on Amazon for about $18. And it has a whole bunch of different modes and ways that it can operate. Um, I've just got it operating RCA to VGA, and it's really designed to handle like you know, any number of, of VGA sources like security cameras that you want to display on a monitor. Um, 
so, you know, when you boot this thing up, Wi-Fi is not going to work. You have to configure Wi-Fi in a text file. Um, so you, you want to plug it into the network. It will come up. It'll find DHCP. Um, easiest thing to do is to use an IP scanner and look for things that have port 22 open on your network. Hopefully you do not have a house full of these things and you'll be able to easily find it. Um, if you do have a house full of stuff that's on port 22 like TiVos and Linux boxes, um, you could do it the, the old school way which is unplug this, run the IP scan, plug it in, run it again take a screenshot of both and compare them and whatever's new is probably this thing. Um, you can um, SSH into it, it's root and one, two, three, four. Um, it'll make you change the password just as soon as you're done with that. Um, so there you have it. This is how you get a image on here and you know, you can see, you know, I'm, I'm hitting the keyboard and uh, causing an imp the, the monitor to react. So that's really this thing. Now, um, you know, this is the 256 meg version and, um, you know, just for kicks and giggles, let's see what it's up to. So it's showing that it is using mm, 0.3 CPU and half percent of my memory. That's pretty cool. Um, So there's a re really neat tool that comes with this uh, Armbian monitor, and um, if you do Armbian monitor monitor dash M, uh, if you just type in Armbian monitor, it'll it'll give you all the different switches. But if you type in dash M, it'll tell you the um, megahertz that the CPU is running at. Oh, you need to be root to do this. So sudo RMBN, oh the hell with it. You know what, just do sudo S like I do because you know what, I'm a big boy and if I wreck my system, it's my own darn fault. RMBN monitor dash M. So I'm running at one gigahertz here. Um, it'll actually max out at about 1.2. So now it's dropped back down to two, 240 megahertz. And um, you know, I'm running 55 degrees Celsius with no, um, uh, or 56, yeah, 54, 56. You know, no, no heat sinks, no fans, no nothing. It's just a bare little tiny chip. So, you know, there you have it. Not bad, um, you know, I'm real, real excited by this, real happy with it. There's lots of opportunity here. Um, somebody has done the god awful hard work of um, adapting the, the uh, Raspberry Pi GPIO um, driver library. So that's my next adventure is to start tinkering with that and get a, um, I, I wanna get a, uh, an LED that I can switch on and off and then I'll, I'll go from there. Cause once I can switch an LED on and off, I can switch about anything on and off. Um, you know, if you were to use this for what it is, there are two USB, well, heck, let's, let's just pull up what's on here. So I'm going to go to NanoHawk because this is the easiest way for me to find my own notes. And here is, so there is... There's two UARTs exposed, a serial port, um, TWIO. I don't, I don't honestly know what that one is. Oh, TWI zero and TWI one. Serial data, serial clock. Um, so it looks like those are two serial ports. In addition to, there's two more UART. Um, there's a UART one. Um, RXTX, a UART2 um, RTS, a UART2 uh, CTS TX RX. It's kind of funny, there's no UART1 um, clear to send, um, ready to send. Um, there's another SPI, 
Um, and then there's Miso, Mosi, Clock, and CS. So this is a full, um, you know, that's a full hardware serial connection there. Um, and then, um, and then you've got an RXTX up here. I don't know exactly where that is. And, and you know, you're not, you're not done. On the other side, you've got, so where the video is, you've got a microphone in and out. Um, oh, you've got a microphone in, a bias, an infrared receiver, um, a left and a right stereo out. And then, uh, um, it looks like two USB ports are surfaced there, plus this USB port. I mean, this thing's got a crap ton of features on it for seven bucks. Um, and it's a quad core processor. Um, so, um, you know, there's a lot going on on this thing. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of fascinating. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a fascinating little device. I ordered the 512 um, meg memory version just for something to play with. It was a couple bucks more. It was, I think, $12.75 including e-packet shipping, so it should be here in a couple weeks. Um, so anyway, hey, thanks for watching my video and I uh, hope you guys found this interesting and helpful. Um, you know, again, if you go to my website, nanohawk.com, I have a link to this specific converter. It was about $18 on Amazon. Um, and then you can buy this on AliExpress for a couple bucks. And these are just female to male jumpers, which if you don't have them, you can get them for about $1.20 for about 40 of them on AliExpress with free shipping. Um, you know, fair warning, it takes about a month for that kind of stuff to come in. And then, um, you know, and then you do need uh, a micro USB um, power source 